Hi there everybody and welcome back to How to Medicate. I recently started my plastic surgery routines and that's why I will be making some videos on that. First of all, I'm starting with this video on carpal tunnel syndrome. In this video, we will cover the carpal tunnel, we will also cover CTS, what symptoms do you have, how do you diagnose it and how do you treat it. This is the professional version, I also made a simpler version, more suitable for patients, that covers carpal tunnel syndrome and easy to understand language and you can find that video in the description. So, now let's get into it. And if you're meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a final year medical student from the Netherlands and I'm posting weekly medical videos to educate you and myself on all kinds of medical topics. So feel free to subscribe for more upcoming videos. Before we start, I also want to do a little disclaimer. This video is purely informational, this is not medical advice. And if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. Welcome to the slides on carpal tunnel syndrome or CTS. Carpal tunnel syndrome is basically caused by compression of your median nerve at the palm of your hand. The prevalence is 5% of all people will develop carpal tunnel syndrome in its life. It usually starts in adulthood and it's more common under women than males. Also, of all the people who develop carpal tunnel syndrome, 33% will have improved symptoms without any kind of treatment within a year. So this is an important feature. Then the carpal tunnel itself is an anatomical compartment at the base of your palm. And in both hands, you have a carpal tunnel. It consists of nine flexor tendons, as well as the median nerve. And it's surrounded by several landmarks. The bottom is made up by your carpal bones, the scaphoid, trapezium and hamate bone. And the roof is made up by the transverse carpal ligament, also called the flexor retinaculum. This is a fibrous band that goes from your piciform bone to your hamate. The most important structure in the carpal tunnel is your median nerve, because it innervates your thumb, index finger, middle finger and the radial side of your ring finger. It gives it sensation as well as feeling and it also innervates the tenor muscles of your hand. If looking at the pathophysiology, the most common cause is unknown. But any condition that increases the pressure in your wrist on your median nerve can cause CTS. This can be caused intrinsically or extrinsically. Most commonly this is intrinsically caused by lipomas, ganglions or vascular malformations. There are certain risk factors for the development of carpal tunnel syndrome. All these risk factors increase the pressure inside of your carpal tunnel and therefore compress your median nerve. An obvious one is obesity. Another one is repetitive wrist work or movements. Because every time you flex or extend your wrist, the pressure inside of your carpal tunnel is increased and therefore the pressure on your median nerve as well. So any jobs with high repetition of wrist movement may lead to CTS on the long term. So pregnancy, genetics, so if your parent had CTS, you're more likely to have it yourself as well. Rheumatoid arthritis, hypothyroidism, as well as diabetes mellitus. Any of these risk factors may lead to the long-term compression of your median nerve. Normally, every time when you flex or extend your wrist, your median nerve glides along with it. However, long-term compression of your median nerve may lead to injury and scarring of your median nerve. This may lead to the adherence to surrounding tissue and therefore to a fixed position of your median nerve. If this is the case, every time you flex or extend, the median nerve cannot move along with it and this may further increase the pressure put on it and therefore further snowball the damaging of your median nerve. And in a healthy wrist, when you flex it, the pressure is already extended eightfold and with an extension, it's even increased tenfold. So this is important to note. This brings us to the symptoms. Long-term compression may lead to symptoms in your thumb, index finger, middle finger and the radial side of your ring finger. The symptoms usually start during nighttime but gradually increase so you also have them during the day. You can have pain in these fingers as well as a burning sensation, numbness and tingling. In more severe cases, the pain and tingling may extend up to your arm. You can also have a weakened grip because your tenor muscle is innervated by the median nerve can have a loss of manual dexterity and wasting of your thumb muscles, which is visible at the mouse of your thumb. In more than 50% of all cases, people might experience those symptoms in both hands. How do you diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome? 
First of all, you go to a doctor. He may ask you several questions and do physical exam. One of the most important signs is muscle wasting at the base of your thumb, which is clearly visible when you have severe CTS. Your doctor might also perform some physical tests to check if you have carpal tunnel syndrome. Those tests are not very sensitive, but can give an indication if you have carpal tunnel syndrome. One of them being Tynol's test or Tynol's test. What he does then is he taps at your transverse ligament. If you, while tapping, experience any form of tingling or pain in your thumb, index finger or middle finger, this might suggest that you have CTS. You can also do this by starting tapping in the finger and then slowly going over your wrist to your elbow. This is a variant of the Tynol's test. Yes. You can also do Phalanx maneuver or Phalanx test. What he does then is he asks you to flex your hands like this and put them dorsally together. Do this for a minute and if you're feeling pain and numbness in your wrists or in your fingers again, this might also suggest that you have CTS or carpal tunnel syndrome. The next step in the diagnostic process would be electrodiagnostic tests. This is usually done by a neurologist where he performs electrodiagnostic tests across the median nerve to check if there are any innervation problems by the nerve. If the neurologist finds any delay in the innervation of your median nerve, this is a high sensitivity to diagnose CTS. And lastly, also an ultrasound of your carpal tunnel might be done to check if there is any irritation of your median nerve or if there are any intrinsic causes that cause your carpal tunnel like lipomas or any other causes. Then how do you treat carpal tunnel? Firstly, we always start with conservative treatment. We improve the ergonomics of the patient, so do not put a lot of pressure on your wrist, try not to do a lot of repetitive movements, maybe wear a wrist splint, Start physiotherapy, this might also help a lot. However, if this is insufficient, we go to medical treatment. The best one being corticosteroid injections, mostly with Kenacort, and those inhibit the inflammation reaction of your median nerve, reduce the irritation, and can improve symptoms for several months, up to maybe a year, depending on the patient. Some doctors even suggest NSIDs or gabapentin, but for those medication, treatment is very limited and the results are not that good. Therefore, we do not really recommend those. Lastly, if medical treatment is insufficient and you already tried several corticosteroid injections or the patient doesn't want them, your last option would be surgical treatment by carpal tunnel release. What you do then in a nutshell is you split the transverse carpal ligaments and therefore you remove the pressure put on your median nerve. Usually, this will lead to very good results and decrease of symptoms. However, because it's a small surgical procedure, it comes with any risks of infections, bleeding and those kinds of things. So it's up to the surgeon to evaluate if you're a suitable patient for the procedure. So this was in a nutshell my overview on carpal tunnel syndrome. We covered the carpal tunnel itself, your symptoms, how to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome and how to treat it. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming videos every week. Thank you for watching and as always, see you next time. Bye bye.